hepatic tumors. Um, the first tumor, which is the most common tumor of the liver, is called um, hepatocellular carcinoma. Um, hepatocellular carcinoma has a variety of different causes. Um, we have um, some of the hepatitis viruses, so hepatitis B and C can cause it. And this is basically caused by the uh, HPV protein, which uh, blocks P53. So this is an important thing to memorize because uh, it's the pathogenesis of the cancer. Um, the other thing is uh, going to be an aflatoxin. Uh, and this aflatoxin comes from the aspergillus fungus. And this has been associated with, um, with hepatocellular carcinoma. Cirrhosis can eventually lead to it. Um, also, we have the uh, metabolic disorders, uh, which can lead to it. And this is going to be uh, such as hemochromatosis, uh, Wilson's, and you have uh, alpha-1 antitrypsin uh, disease. And then also tyrosinemia. Uh, has been associated with uh, hepatocellular carcinoma as well. Um, clinically, uh, what what are the manifestations? Um, so what we're going to be looking at clinically is first of all, of course, is going to be a mass on the liver, right? As the um, tumor is progressing. The other thing is you're going to have an increase in AFP, uh, alpha fetal protein. Uh, you also have uh, a few paraneoplastic syndrome, which should be noted. Um, uh, uh, this includes the most common paraneoplastic syndrome, which is hypercalcemia. Uh, but you can also get uh, hypoglycemia. And you can get uh, polythysemia. And um, generally, uh, death. Uh, death occurs either through cachexia, uh, it's either through the GI bleed, uh, through liver failure, or tumor rupture. So any of these things can cause um, the death of the person. Uh, and uh, how does it metastasize? It usually metastasizes through the hemo hematogenous route. So this is the uh, most common hepatic tumor. However, there are other tumors which should be mentioned. Um, the, the primary uh, benign one is going to just be a hepatic adenoma. And these are actually reversible. Um, these are associated with uh, either steroid use or a patient who's on steroids or oral contraceptive pills. As soon as they get off the drugs, uh, the uh, adenoma regresses and the patient is fine. Uh, the other one is going to be the cutaneous, um, uh, sorry, not cutaneous, uh, cavernous. Oops. Cavernous uh, hemangioma. So, uh, cavernous hemangioma um, is benign and it's usually basically the vessels. Um, they look like a cavernous space. So they form this cavernous space, and so it looks kind of like a um, cancer, but it's not. And um, what you don't want to do is you don't want to rupture. So you don't want to do no biopsy, because if you do a biopsy, you can actually cause the whole thing to rupture, and then they can cause an internal bleed. So you really want to be careful with that. Now, um, the other one that we're going to look at, which is actually malignant, is angiosarcoma. Um, angiosarcoma is a cancer of the um, endothelial cells. So endothelial cells um, cancer is going to be angiosarcoma and it has a few associations. Um, one is going to be associated with vinyl chloride. 
Two, it's going to be associated with arsenic poisoning. And it can also be associated with thoratrast. So, so basically, uh, angiosarcoma was caused by you know, different types of poisons. And uh, it metastasized widely, and you know, once it's metastasized, uh, the prognosis is less than one year.